Welcome to another episode of Crime Pays with Botany Does It. We're down here with my friend Gabriel over there. You can see he's, uh, you know, we've been we cutting up a storm, you know. We're just, hey, just having a blast down here on the gypsum. Got a lot of good stuff going on. You get these gypsum deposits, calcium sulfate, could basically co-occurs with uh, limestone. It's very water-soluble, but we're in an arid area. You can tell they did get some rain right here. Ooh, lovely grass. We're in an arid area, so, uh, you know, the water... Uh, the water tends to concentrate it and uh, and then leave it behind once it evaporates. Now, gypsum tends to form, again, most of this stuff came from uh, the Western Interior Seaway, roughly 100 million years old in the Cretaceous, and gypsum tends to indicate an estuary environment, like a shallow nearshore environment where all the sediments... Uh, uh, you know, ev evaporite deposits basically, all the evaporites pull up. But uh, regardless, you get a ton of cool plants that only co only occur on gypsum. That is their gypsum endemic. You can see we got Selaginella gypsophila. We got this really cool and really beautiful grass species right here that I have yet to identify. We got Hectia glomerata, and we got a bunch of uh, really cool ferns. Even got some cacti. I'll show them to you over here. Here's some Turbenicarpus lauii. Got another one. Where the shit did it go? It was over there somewhere. Just nestled. Nestled in this. Now this gypsum turns soft when it gets wet. And then once it dries out again, it forms a crust. You can see there's also stuff. You can see it can be hollow. Hollow quite a bit too. We have some cool legume right here. Not sure what it is. And uh... Even cooler, well, I think everything's equally cool and wonderful in the gypsum. But somewhat more interesting, we got this uh, carnivorous plant. We got a carnivore, Pinguicula tatakii, right there. See those little tiny, little tiny bastards right there? Sticky leaves, one of the tiniest pinguiculas in the world. Pinguicula is a big genus. You get them in Florida, you get them in California. That's one of the smaller species. God, this grass is just gorgeous. What is this? Holy hell, got Hectia, got cool ferns. Got Isenhardia, I wonder if it's Polystachia or what. Very pleasant smell to it. Amorpha tribe, a Fabaceae. Ooh, yeah, very pleasant smell. And we got this, this composite right here. The shit is this? Ooh, those are Keens. Oh, we got flowers on it. We got remnant flowers. Yeah, look at that. multi series phylary is canescent as hell. Very woolly. Oh, we got this tiny lobelia, too. I've seen this in the Nuevo Leon before. I forget the species, but it is. It's a tiny, tiny lobelia. I don't use lotion. I gotta use more lotion. My hands are all fucked up. Yeah, see, you got a lobelioid calyx. Those sepals are pretty narrow, and then you got that little green bit with the uh, a little beauty, that little that little uh, purple, dark purple pollen tube up top. God, look at this thing! I just can't get over it. Look, you get the you get the tubes still. You get the the floral tubes in there. How many how many corollas? Five. Yeah, there we go. Whole thing canescent as hell, super woolly, growing out of pure gypsum. Who's this? That looks nice. Cool monocot. Bunch of good shit. This habitat is just so rich. So here we got this cool little cryptanthoid bastard with these popcorn flower uh, like flowers and all those stiff little hairs. Boraginaceae is the family. Here we got a member of Apocinaceae with those bullhorn like fruits. Probably a mandevilla of some kind. And it did just have some cool bugs on it. And then we got this really interesting fern sending up its sporophyll right there. Which uh, doesn't seem to be open right now, but uh, is certainly very interesting nonetheless. Growing, co-occurring with the Hectia. See, there's more of those fruits, follicle bullhorn fruits of this species of Apocinaceae, probably a mandevilla. And all over the ground, just Selaginella up the wazoo. And this beautiful grass. Look at that. Look at how graceful that grass is. Get in there and just take a look at it. Look at that. Look at those little spikelets on that, gra <clears throat> on that grass. Oh. Oh, that's curious. We got a Menzilia here. I wonder what Menzilia that is. Look at that. I don't know that capsule fruit anyway. Then we got Aloysia macrostachia right here with the pink flowers, Verbenaceae. Again, stiff little hairs on everything. A lot of good stuff. God damn, look, how'd you like to fall into a colony of Hectia? 
Huh? Look at that. No development, no billboards, no buckies, no fucking car dealerships, no billboards for personal injury attorneys. What? What's more heinous shit I can think of? Ooh, look at the nice Dacelerian. Nice soda right there. Oh yeah, and then that legume, look at that. That's a diagnostic factor. Look at how the legume seeds break up. Each seed breaks up and in the bean pod breaks up into its little own little square. What is this dahlia? Look at that. It looks like a fucking salt lick right there. You can see how the water just runs right off of it. See how see how soluble that gypsum is? We got a dahlia right here. You gotta check the stems because sometimes you'll see pilostyles popping out the stem. It's a it's a endo endoparasitic plant. But there's a little dahlia flowers. Everything canescent, everything silvery. It must be hot as balls here in the summer, even though we are at about 4,600 feet. And then that grass that I love so much. I don't know what that is. God damn, I love it though. Oh, look, there's a croton. They always smell good. Yeah, how many different species of croton are there? A fuck ton. They all kind of smell good. They got fuzzy leaves. And uh, Euphorbiaceae. All right, this is going in a suitcase. I'm taking a rock. Don't tell nobody. Ah, feels like drywall. Feels like a fuzzy rock. Look at that. Fucking wild. Oh, we got a chylanthoid fern, Myriopterus or Astrolepus. Can't find a sporophyll, but look at those. Look at those revolute margins on those leaves. I said, wow. Look at the veins on there. Holy shit. Gets me hot. And then we got, what is this? What is this thing? It's like opposite leaves, but they look rosaceous. I saw a garriot down there too. All the stuff you know from Texas, because Texas is just Mexico, even though I don't want to admit it. Oh, this thing appears to be a flax, a linum species. If I saw more stamens, that would indicate uh, a hypericum, but uh, they tend to like it wetter. And this is not wet. God, these grasses are just killing me. Fucking incredible. Look at that. What a beautiful landscape. What a fucking gorgeous landscape. Yeah, that's like a little shrubby, suffrutescent linum. It's uh, growing on gypsum and probably endemic. So, you know, we pulled over to just get a real nice view of the gypsum in all its glory. And also because there's some really nice plants right here. So, you know, it's December and so it's pretty cool. But uh, we're only at uh, 4,900 feet, which uh, can be very hot in the summer at 22 degrees latitude in San Luis Potosí. Look at that mammalaria. Oh, my God. Man Parkinsonii. And we got Euchnidae over there from the family Loisaceae. No idea what Euchnidae that is, but it will have scabbard leaves. Uh, it's not flowering now. We just got a whole host of hectias everywhere. Beautiful pattern on that gypsum. I feel like I'm Al Scorch doing bathroom reviews. Really? Oh my God, look at that. And then it's shriveled and it's dry, but we got a, it's a, it looks like an Argyra Cosma. A lot of the same, that might be actually a Gaga or Nathalina. It's one of the Xeric ferns from the Chylanthoid ferns, the pteridaceous, pteridaceous things. A lot of the same stuff you see in Nuevo Leon down here. That's, I wonder if that's just Ignati Lobata or what. And then there was uh, Nahualia, formerly Gachnadia, up there. Hypoluca, which we get in South Texas too. But it's a little bit cooler and milder here. We got, uh, what is this, a Brachelia? Does seem to be so. Ooh, look at the leaves on that. Ooh, we got a nice Hedioma right there. Mint family Lamiaceae. And then we got this Gaga fern. Formerly our, our Gyra Cosma. Actually, maybe it is our Gyra Cosma. You can see that white wax, that beautiful white wax that it's got on the undersides. There's a bunch more up there, but they're all dried up up there. Oh, this is not Euchnidae lobata. The flowers are much bigger, as are the leaves. And they're not as scabbard. Yeah. Another wonderful rock petal. Oh, there's a, there's a kind of serious pentalophus, or is that, it's pentalophus, I guess, in the wall right there. Just, uh, just, just sneak, oh yeah, who's that up there? Ferrocactus echidnae. It's a ferrocactus? Yeah. Jesus Christ. It's still coming out of the wall. And right here, we've seen this bastard everywhere. Beautiful leaves opposite, it's obviously asteraceae. It's got the uh, scabbard hairs on it that are appressed to the leaves, to those chordate leaves. And uh, we got two little beetles, you know, just really going at it. They're kind of like banging. You know, it's like a fuck hotel and then they're eating the pollen too. But, uh, you know, I looked at these flowers and this thing's actually been common on the gypsum. So this is probably a gypsum endemic. Haven't seen it many other places. 
They're basically little sunflowers without any of the petals, the rays. Remember, they're not really petals on sunflowers. They're called rays. And I assumed that the flowers were, you know, on ease were closed. And then when I got close, I realized they're open. They're just really tiny. You can see those styles curled back into curly Q position. And then the ones up top are in the male phase, little rads. And, uh, and that's what it's doing right there. Wild. Tiny flowers. Makes sense to keep them small, though, if you're in a very hot, dry place. Look at that whole beautiful wall. God, I just love it so much. Look at, you got to love the gypsum. So moving on down the road, we see another pinguicula species. This one, a gypsum endemic. And you can see it's just getting its winter leaves, those little tight, compact rosettes. During the summer rainy season, it's got those long tentacle-like leaves. And it's once again grown with Selaginella gypsophila and uh this time this really cool fern i don't know what the shit this is it's a chylanthoid it's maybe a astrolepis of some kind it does kind of look like an astrolepis very unique again just all growing up look there's a whole all those pinguiculas all the ping gypsicolas are just growing up this gypsum slope and it's very pleasant weather now but it can be very hot of course in the uh summertime we're at 4600 feet elevation and presumably this is a seep, because carnivorous plants, almost all of them, grow in uh, wet soils. But it's not going to be raining now, so again, since this is the dry season. That's why they're putting on those little compact rosettes, and then those tentacles presumably will fall off and then reemerge with the onset of rains. Got more hectias, got that other weird composite with the yellow flowers that I have yet to find out what it is. Got this thing that looks like a hedioma over there like a shrubby hedioma a lot of interesting shit just it was such a bizarre form for a carnivore though for a pinguicula you know pings like shade they the butterworts they could be really easy houseplants probably not this one because it grows in such an extreme habitat but a lot of pinguicula diversity out there you know you get them in florida get them in california this wild, this thing really, I said wow, you know, that really, that really takes the cake right there. Pinguicula gypsicola. Uh, it's marina. Filiformis. This used to, or filifera, what I forget, fill is something. It used to be in Dahlia. And just a year or two, it got switched over to the genus marina, which is also a legume and is related to Dahlia. It smells really good. And of course, we got Savalia sinuata. Ooh, nice piece of garbage in it right there. Looks like we got a Dodonea as well, some cool agaves. Oh, yeah, this is Hedioma. I believe I just saw this in the Nuevo Leon a couple months ago. Look at those calices. So mint family Lamiaceae. You can see those vase-like green calices, bilater symmetrical pink flowers, and it's got that wonderful minty smell. Little shrub growing on the side of the road. Look at all the sledge, too. Sledge and illus. Oh, nice. And then coming out of the gypsum with the, uh, the ping, we got an orchid. Let me see. What is this? What's this look like? I wonder if that's a gypsum endemic too. I'm gonna have to get nice flowers, flower shots of that, nice money shots of that. So much cool stuff on what so many would otherwise describe as a barren hill. There's that medzelia again. That's a really interesting medzelia. Oh, this weird fuzzy fern is a pelea. Holy shit. Look at how fuzzy the undersides of those. Look at that's like woolly, tomentos. Holy shit. That's crazy. That's a weird variation on a pelea. Stressful soils in a dry season will do that to a plant, I guess, huh? This is a nice spread, just like a charcuterie board of cool plants, all right? You got the Selaginella gypsicola, that cool pelea, the coffee fern with so uh, so woolly and so tomatose, and of course, pinguicula gypsicola just looking like an octopus, and then this really cool lobelia species. And how do we know it's a lobelia? Because it's got that little hooked fused anther column with the pollen presenter and a bilabiate corolla right there he's growing out of growing out of the gypsum with that other composite species just a wealth of cool shit look at this little devious bastard hanging out waiting for a meal right it happens to be the same color as the flowers of this composite waiting for a pollinator to come by and then he's gonna sp he's gonna sp just spring on him Oh, this is just Guajillo. This is just Senegalia Berlandi, right? Which we get in South Texas, too. You see those those hanging fruits. And then there's those flowers. One of my favorite species from the thorn scrub. An important nurse plant for peyote as well. Except we're at 4,500 feet on gypsum. Oh, look at that grass. 
Oh, that's a nice. There's some birds up there. I wish I knew what they were. Very pleasant listening to them. Uh, Golombrina, I think. They got feral cactus guacessens and Mammillaria parkinsonian down there. And shit blowing up down the way. I don't know what they're doing, but I'm glad I'm here and not uh, <laughs> not in the U.S. right now. What can I drink it up like a bit of medicine? Ooh, that's a nice agave down there. Whatever that is. Look at those spines on that thing. God damn, that's beautiful. Agave zylonacantha grown with a little hectia next to it. Oh, you see, what are they doing up there? What are those things? Drink it up. You can pretend the sixth mass extinction isn't happening. See, there I go. I gotta bring it back to something negative. Anyway, it's all I got. Have a great day. Go fuck yourself. Bye. So, this is wild to see. So, this is Gocnadia hypoluca, now Nohualia hypoluca. And it's a member of the Asteraceae. It's a small tree. We get it in South Texas, but South Texas, again, much different climate than here. South Texas is hot all the time. And uh, this is very pleasant right now. It's much higher elevation here, too. There's a kind of serious pentalophus. And we got a little, uh, can't tell if that's an agave or what. But then over here, we have another South Texas species, common in the thorn scrub, uh, but in a much milder climate where it's only hot for some of the year. This is Karwinskia humboldtiana, which is in uh, the buckthorn family Ramnaceae. Very toxic leaves. There's the fruits little berries they turn black when they're uh, when they're ready to go and uh, it's got smaller leaf size and just looks like a slightly different ecotype uh, and no doubt it's growing uh, on gypsum and in a milder much milder setting 